right, now I'm going to go over the processing sketch. This is using processing 3.0.2. I named this also Cardiograph. And uh, we'll post a link in the video to download this code from GitHub. But uh, it's going to take me a little while to get it up there. I've got other things i got to do. So if you want to get a head start on it, you can go ahead and copy the code down from this video. Uh, so let's get started. So I'm using a couple of different libraries here that you're going to have to use. I will include those in the GitHub download. Uh, one of them is a JTransforms uh, library. This is for your fast Fourier transforms. And they've got several different uh, transforms. So I'm just using the FFT transform with an array of floats. You can use doubles. Uh, there's several different ones. Uh, you can go ahead and play around with that if you want. And this is just processing serial. This is just a standard so you can uh, print debug information to the serial port. And also this Java library uh, I had for a beeping sound. So I, I had it set up so that, and you, you can enable this, I had it set up so it was beeping every time there was a heartbeat. But uh, I just couldn't take it anymore. It's, you know, after you know several hundred beats of that, it kind of drives you crazy. <laughs> so I, I just turned it off. You can turn it on if you want to. Uh, this is the debug switch. If you turn that on, we'll just do that. It's going to uh, print out the debug information down here in the console. I'll give you a quick little uh, view of that. And yeah, here we go. Minimize this really quick, just so you can see the serial output. I just put my hand or finger on the sensor. So hopefully it'll start grabbing some data. And after about 10 beats, there we go, we start seeing some uh, FFT, uh, fast Fourier transform information. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop the sketch so you can kind of take a look at the serial data. Um, anyways, you can use all this information to help you debug the script if you want to. So if you wanna start changing things around and start having problems, uh, this can at least help you uh, figure out what's going on. That's basically what I used it for. Come up here and really quick show you uh, some of the information. So every time we get a beat, or actually any, any time there's any sensor data, uh, it's just going to send this out. And this is printing out the main graph line and showing you some of the data each time it's uh, receiving it. And uh, this was what happens when we get a beat. Not only get the S data that I showed you earlier with the Arduino sketch and the serial, you also get the, the bits, the beat, uh, bit pin, excuse me, bits per minute, 68, and you get the IBI, which is this uh, 478. Now this, this is a 10 beat average, and it does not reflect this. This happens every beat. So these aren't exactly, you know, there's not an exact correlation between these two. You'd have to calculate the last 10 of these to get that. So this is a uh, array that holds uh, a lot of that data. And this is being used in the power spectrum uh, graph. Uh, basically, it starts with 10, 10 variables and moves its way up to 20. When it's got 20, it just sits there. You can And you can change this. I'll show you later on the code. And here's the uh, FFT values. We're only using half of the values because uh, the other half is just a mirror image. If you think about it, it's like a wave. Um, so you, you're really only using half of that information to get your spectrum uh, data. So like I said, we have about 20 elements in the array. So this is going to put out 40. But again, we're only using half. So that's just sort of how the fast Fourier transform works. And if you want to find out more about that, I'd suggest uh, doing some searching on YouTube. There's lots of information, lectures on uh, fast Fourier transforms. It's rather complicated, so I'm not going to go into it here. Anyways, that's the uh, data that uh, you can use for debugging. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Whoops. I 
fingers sometimes hit the uh, mouse pad and crazy things happen. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, move along with this sketch. Now I just like to set up my COM port manually. A lot of people allow it to be done dynamically. That's just me. Anyways, we'll keep on going down here. Just a lot of standard variables that are sort of self-explanatory, I hope. So I'm not going to go into every single detail, just the more complex uh, areas. So this is for your FFT uh, spectrum variables. Holds the data that's being sent to the FFT and then later on being uh, used in the charts. And these are just some holders like your beat, low frequency, high frequency, uh, the old values so that you can print out a, a line graph, draw out a line graph, and more values similar to that and just some color definitions. Beats per minute, the inner beat interval or resting rate if you will. And uh, the X position which is basically the position uh, the main graph along the X axis and I'll show you real quick get this thing started Put the finger on it anyways as that increments that causes this to move along here hope that makes sense and more variables uh, frequency variables this is for the the uh, Hertz graph right here and we're gonna get more variables for all of these these different graphs as it goes down and you guys you can you know go through all those things yourself these are the definitions of the windows It just kinda of makes it easier to draw things and to move these windows around so I like to define their coordinates so to speak uh, globally so you got each each window your all your different windows and we're going to get into the setup routine here. All right. Now we're going to go into the setup routine. Uh, basically, I'm setting up uh, my window, making it non-resizable. Otherwise, you're going to get uh, all sorts of... It's not going to look right. And my size. Now, when I execute this uh, program, I do get this warning, translate, or this particular variation of it is not available with this renderer. Now, when I looked it up online to try and fix this issue, basically I had to add uh, different variables here. But uh, in doing that, <clears throat> it made this, it made the, it made everything look weird. So I took it out because it seems to work fine without it. So I just took that out, and uh, it is what it is. If you guys want to change that and change the way these things are drawn out, that's entirely up to you. Um, it works the way it is, although you do get this warning, so if someone wants to try and get rid of that, knock yourself out. Alright, let's move on here. So, back to the ports. Uh, again, you want to make sure that this matches your Arduino. Otherwise, they're not going to talk together. You can get all sorts of strange characters. It's not going to know what to do with it. So make sure these things match. I think that's probably the most common problem people have when they're trying to use these uh, applications. Um, you want you want the faster speed because this is a a sensing application. You know it, it's just going to work better. All right, we get down to some of these arrays. This is uh, basically containing all the dots in that uh, spectrum array, not the spectrum array, but basically the the Hertz plot. I'm sorry, I have a cup of coffee there. I'll give you a little show. So the, all these dots here. That's uh, being uh, held by those different arrays. All right, so it gets printed out. It's just, just printing out, sort of initializing things. Go down here, we're just setting up the background. And this is drawing out, uh, basically initializing our windows, our little graph windows. See right here? And this is uh, drawing out the scale for each window. Let's see. Uh, right here all these things have scales it was uh, a good thing to set this up it really made me um, more critical of the data to make sure the data that was being displayed on these graphs was actually correct so anyways this is the scale for the BPM window 
and they're not necessarily in order but uh, basically it's printing out drawing out all the scales and setup and it doesn't have to do it every single time all right <clears throat> now we're down to the draw routine I'm just setting a different stroke weight and these uh, basically are trying to determine if we actually have a real heartbeat or not for example I call it a flat line if you take your finger off the sensor it'll go into flat line mode and it'll freeze the graphs and just print out a flat line just sort of like you'd see you know in a uh, EKG or ECG I'll show you what I mean here so we got this thing going and it's uh, printing out all my heartbeat information here and I take my finger off well <clears throat> goes into flatline mode and you put your fingers back you know put your finger back on the sensor it starts to uh, do some detection and there we go it starts operating again um, you can kind of trick it and get anomalous data if you want I'll show you how to do that uh, it's kind of useful in testing if you want don't want to have to hold on to the thing all the time and basically what I do is just take a little piece of paper or something like that and stick it over the sensor. And what that does is sort of tricks the sensor. It starts bouncing, reflecting light off the piece of paper and starts printing out anomalous readings. So I'll give you a little demonstration here. Take my finger off this thing, let it flatline for a sec. And I'm going to put a piece of paper over it. And voila, there you go. I just tricked it. It's not actually reading a heartbeat, it's just bouncing light off this piece of paper and giving you all sorts of crazy anomalous uh, readings. So that's one way you can you know, use it if you want to, just to get data, just to see what's going on, have things moving. I'm going to take that thing, piece of paper off, put my fingers back on it. I'm basically using my thumb and just kind of holding it between my fingers. Sometimes I gotta make some little adjustments to get it right. And there we go. Almost there. Right. And you know, if you have this thing set up so you can put it on your finger without having to move your finger around and it's always the correct pressure, you're, you're probably gonna get even better eating. See, I just move my finger and Graphing a little bit out of whack. Just trying to get this thing a little more set up here. Whoop, flat lined. And now we're back. Alright, so I'll go back to the sketch code here. That's what we're doing here, just uh, determining if we should flat line or not. And if we are in debug mode, <clears throat> I showed you that earlier. This is going to print out information for debugging to make things so you can see what's going on. And uh, this is just moving through some more uh, information and uh, keeping uh, the data inside the main window. Like if, uh, for example, if these peaks and troughs start going up really high, which they can. Uh, we don't want it to draw over everything else. We want it to stop this line. All right, so keep going down to the draw routine here. We have clear labels. Just this is just uh, clearing the text that you would see in these labels here. Just clears them out every time. And we've got the IBI graph again. This these things aren't necessarily in order, but this is uh, drawing out the IBI graph, interbeat to interval, and uh, when it gets to the end of the window, it just resets it so it can draw again. And the same thing here with the bitmap window, doing basically the same thing. I'll show you real quick. So these two, just drawing, 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 they get to the end of the window here, and they will reset. Yeah. It just so happens we happen to be there right now. This window does the same thing. These do not. These update every single time. These only update every, you know, 150 beats for these two. Alright. <coughs> Excuse me. Keep going down here. And we just start drawing out some of these labels. 
that you see in the top of the graphs, making them numbers look right instead of having long floating point decimals trailing off into nowhere. And we're setting up our percentages that you'll see in the uh, far right graph over here. We've got different percentages over here in the LF versus HF power graph. This is just the averages you see in that far right window. Bring them all out. And we also have uh, these things here telling you that it's gathering data. So when you first start it up, it's going to gather data until it gets 10 data elements to uh, feed to the uh, fast Fourier transform. All right, now I'll get down into the draw the LF versus HF chart.